Algebra Lesson 1-6. First bit of information we want to talk about today is data. And data is information, facts, or numbers that help us to describe something. We can collect data a number of ways. We can go out and we could take a survey. We could mail the survey. We could call in a survey. Um, you know, you might ask somebody what's their favorite type of ice cream. Say you're an ice cream company or a, uh, uh, an ice cream shop and you're thinking of coming into the, a, a local area and you kind of want to get a feel for the type of flavors that most people uh, enjoy because that's the one you want to stock the most of and maybe a, a few of the other items you know that are specialty you won't, you won't purchase as much because you really don't want to have the ice cream go bad and you'd like to cater to your customers you know wants. So information is pretty important when it comes to the, you know, a business aspect. We can collect data uh, for all kinds of things. You know, they're, they're, they're constantly throwing statistics at us. And there's that old joke that 42.8% you know, of all statistics are made up on the spot. and The joke is that I just made up that statistic about it. But we need to learn about how to A, interpret the statistics that are given to us, possibly manipulate those or make sure someone hasn't manipulated the statistics for us and they're trying to trick us and possibly know the different types of ways, you know, which types of, of, of visual aids could be used for displaying the data. It's always helpful if you have something that you can look at. One of the ways that we'll use to describe the data is known as a bar graph. <clears throat> and they can actually be in two different forms. We could have a horizontal version, <clears throat> which the bar graph, the axes are set up like this, and the bar, the bar graphs move horizontally. This is very nice if you're comparing different types of objects to each other. For example, at the ice cream, maybe this is vanilla, and maybe this is mint and chip, and this one in here is chocolate. Since chocolate's the best, it should have the biggest bar graph. But you can compare them relatively easy when they're on the same axes. You can tell which one has more than the other. It could happen with pets. It could happen with favorite cities. You know, who knows? You can, you can basically do it however you want. It can also be displayed vertically, which is pretty similar, except that the whole graph is turned 90 degrees. But again, you can tell. Maybe, maybe you're comparing the tallest buildings in the world. I always think that a bar graphs, you know, they look like buildings. It's nice to have color, but you might not have color. So sometimes you could put little symbols inside, you know, fill it up with circles, fill it up with triangles, fill it up with squares. You can still do some things to make each one look a little bit different. But again, these are very useful for comparing different objects, different items to each other because you can relatively easily decipher which one's bigger, smaller, less, more, etc. But we also have another version <clears throat> which is a line graph. So again, another way to organize the data, but this is especially useful if you're showing the same particular item with change over time. As an example of this, say these were the different months of the year. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, etc. You could really get an idea of how things are changing. Oh, we had an increase from January to February. Uh, we had a decrease then. What happened? Oh, we picked things back up. Maybe these are your grades. Hopefully they finish off you know, up there. <clears throat> now, I have taken each of these types of graphs and I've made a, a bar graph right here. This particular bar graph, <clears throat> I'm not sure if it'll Maybe I'll do a white screen. All right, this particular bar graph is showing different cable subscriptions. Now, it's hard for you to see exactly the axes over here, but I'll get the scale. I'll let you know that it goes from about 300, 0 to 300, all the way up to 4,500. And as you look at these bar graphs, this one's at 3,500, 3,700, and 4,300 you don't see any major differences. The graphs themselves look relatively close. You can tell that there's an increase, so that by 1991, there were more subscriptions than there were in 1989. All right? Now, I'm going to give you the exact same data, but I'm going to change things. I'm going to manipulate it according to this axis over here. Again, same data, but now it looks as if 1991 is quite a bit more. Let me tell you what the scale is over here. On this side, you have 3,000 rather than 0, 300, all the way up to 4,500. So what I've done is I've focused in on the top part and accentuated. All right, why would somebody want to do this? Well, 
let's say I'm the CEO of this company, and maybe I want to go into the shareholders and tell them, hey, under my watch, here's how well the company has done. Now, at first glance, it looks like, you know, I took over in uh, 1991. Before me, here were the subscriptions. Now with me, oh, I like doubled it. I didn't really double it. Remember, this is the same information. All I'm doing is focusing in on this top part so it's accentuating it. I've stretched the axes, all right? So you can manipulate data and you gotta be really careful. Don't just look at what you see. Look at the axes and make sure you're interpreting it correctly, all right? In the same way, <clears throat> somebody might say, even though this was the data, maybe they wanted to take my position as CEO and they might lessen the impact. They might say, yeah, there was some increase, but not that much. You know, so that, that might be their angle, okay? Now with the line graph, we can do something fairly similar. All right? This is some unemployment rates from March through August. And I just kind of made up these, these numbers. Down here is zero on the axes. Up here is 7%, all right? So for each 100 people that are out there, seven of them would not have a job. Uh, <clears throat> you can see that here it's at 5.3, 5.9, 6.1, 6.1, 6.6, and 6.9. So it, it did go up. It, it definitely went up, and you can tell that. But again, I can manipulate this section. Instead of spreading the whole graph out and only looking at this, if I expand this part to stretch out, it'll expand these changes. So the exact same data now looks a little bit more intense. It's really gone up in comparison. All right? If I'm a politician, I'm going to publish something that looks like this if I want to take over for someone else's position. Under so-and-so, unemployment rose this much. It looks more dramatic. This person might say, yes, unemployment did rise, but not significantly. It was rather, you know, had some, some soft spots here. Didn't go up that much. It's a rough economy. You know, they're going to try to lessen the look of it. So it really depends on how you want to manipulate it. You could do the same thing with the bottom axes. If you stretch the bottom axes out, then it won't be as dramatic. If you scrunch it together, it'll make it look more steep. So you really must be careful. Whenever you're given a graph, whether it's a bar graph, a line graph, a pie chart, you know, any of these things, you must take a look at the axes and how it was made. Because otherwise, you might get tricked. And it's, it's not to say that, well, that's... They're, they're cheating or they're lying or they're, they're trying to fake me out. Well, they're not really lying. They're just manipulating, all right? So you need to be smart enough to overlook those kind of things or look through those.